All right, here we go. We're going to go to the phones. Dan starts us off in Wheaton, Illinois. Dan, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. Thanks so much for taking my call. Um, just want to give a quick success story about the proximity principle and then a quick question if you have time. Yeah, I love it. Tell folks how you succeeded. This is what really fires people up. Right. So um, after working like in banking and like doing home equity loans for a long time, um, about six years, I really identified a job I wanted as like a mortgage law officer, helping people, you know, buy homes and refinance is like what I really wanted to get into. And um, I was um, applying for jobs and was running into like what a lot of people do is, you know, they want you to have one year or two years experience and have experience in these certain things. So it was kind of a roadblock, even some like lower level positions I was trying to go for. I just wasn't even like getting interviews or anything like that. So um, I ended up applying for a job at a company and, you know, almost two weeks went by, didn't hear anything. Um, ended up talking to my sister who knows this lady at the gym that works for the company. Let her know I was, um, you know, interested in this. But the next day I got a call from like a higher level person. A um, couple of weeks of like back and forth trying to set up a call with different people. But eventually, um, you know, got an interview with someone and they ended up knowing someone I currently work with. And like, we like had a great conversation. They reached out to them. Um, and basically I, I got the job. There you go. Um, so, um, it was, you know, kind of just, you know, the experience was going to be a hurdle, but then just, you know, with these people's recommendation, yeah. like the experience and didn't even like come up. So it's just, uh, yeah. This is awesome. Good for you, dude. You know what you did? You just started looking for your connections and you started connecting the dots. The old, yeah. you know, kind of elementary school activity where you get a sheet and they go, connect the dots. And then you connect the dots. You go, oh, it's a dog holding a bone, you know, and you didn't know what it was when you started. So uh, you've done a great job with that. And I'm so glad you shared the story because I want people to hear just how practical that was. There was nothing mind-blowingly difficult in that process, correct? Correct. correct. I love it. I love it. Yeah, super easy. And then but just a quick question is, so um, the loan officer was the job I was going for. This is going to be a loan officer assistant. I'm going to be working under like a really experienced, high producing guy. Um, and like the compensation plan is awesome. And it's exactly what I need and want. Um, I guess just trying to get it out of my own head that like, the, the title of loan officer assistant, like I'm this guy's assistant and just, you know, you know, putting that out there on like social media, LinkedIn is like, that's my job. And like, if I was ever to go on my own, like I've been an assistant for years, like I think it's a good place to start, but I guess just how do you get that title out of your head as good yeah. as that sounds? That's I love, just, you know, no, I love the question, dude. And you know what? Welcome to being a human and we all have got pride and pride, right. pride, pride can be a real enemy to progress if we're not careful. Right. And the fact of the matter is, you know, this is a good job. You know this is giving you the experience you need. And people in your industry know what that title means. That's not going to make you look bad. Um, and, you know, kill it. Get in there and do a great job. Maybe you can talk your leader into changing your title a little bit. But if you're focused on title, and by the way, I understand why you are, but you're going to have to get over that. Because this, is, this isn't your dream job anyway. This is the right. next step on the ladder, the next rung, if you will. So embrace it. Get over it. I understand why you feel the way you feel. You shouldn't feel bad about it. You're not a bad person, but just stop thinking about it. But you spend more time going, gosh, this title makes me sound like a, like an, a, like an assistant, like I'm not actually doing the work. Well, not really, because people know that title in your industry, and what it really matters is not the title on your resume. It, it matters the work and the recommendations for people in the industry that you have uh, built relationships with who are going to help you and usher you right into your next gig anyway. So you, you live the proximity principle, which you have, then think about it. Not only did you use the proximity principle to get the job you want, now you're going to use the proximity principle to really never have to apply for a job again. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little bit romantic when I say that, but think about it. If you truly use the proximity principle well, you're not just going to apply for something an opportunity is going to come to you. And then they're saying, hey, we want you. And so when you apply, it's nothing more than a uh, just a part of the process. But people are seeking you out. 
That's what I teach. And that's what you need to be doing. So stop worrying about title and start worrying about the right people in the right places in this new gig. That's all you worry about. Forget title. And you'll never have to worry about title. You never have to worry about uh, people's perception of you. Keep using the proximity principle.